Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome into the channel. Uh, today's February 24th, Thursday afternoon, uh, 2022. Kind of a tough day. There's a lot of stuff going on in the world. I'm sure all of you know about that, but we're here to talk about business. And so I figured uh, I would give you guys the first in a set of series for 2022 on uh, the best selling items that are not clothing. Items to sell on eBay or even Amazon for that matter that are not clothing. I know I have a lot of clothing sellers that watch this channel or that are part of my groups, but a lot of you want to branch out to other things like hard goods, electronics, uh, potentially toys or consumer electronics, things like that, uh, which will also open up opportunities for you to possibly start selling on Amazon. So I figured let's go over some of the best selling items in 2022 that are not clothing. So let's go over to my screen, I'll show them to you and hopefully some of these will work out for you as items you can add into your inventory. So there is uh, a chance at higher average sale prices and average profits and faster sell through rates and all around win, win, win. When you do hard goods, toys, electronics, it's what more people shop for. Clothing is fine. You can make plenty of money on it, but those items, other items tend to sell better, which is why I want to get you guys kind of in that mindset of, you know, consumer goods and whole uh, kitchen goods and, and all that sort of stuff. And also while I'm at it, there's some links down below for some free Amazon workshops and free Amazon book downloads of learning how to sell on Amazon and what people do to make money on Amazon. Uh, if you're scared of Amazon, if you've never sold on Amazon, if you didn't even know you could sell on Amazon, definitely worth checking out those links below. There's gonna be a March 1st uh, workshop and live Zoom webinar that you can check out. There's also a free uh, ebook download and guide to download, so go check that out. They're completely free. Uh, you can just click on them and, and pop in your email and have it all sent over to you. So without further ado, let's roll over and look at some of the best items that will sell for you in 2022 if you decide to go that route. Okay, so we're gonna jump right into this list and I've got the 20 of them right here. And the great thing about this uh, list of 20 in these categories, about 15 of them, you can actually sell on Amazon in addition to eBay if you wanna get started on Amazon. Again, I'm gonna put some links in the description box if you have any interest in selling on Amazon or learning about it. Uh, some really great resources, free resources down there for you. But in the meantime, let's go over this list of 20. You can see it right there in front of you and I'm gonna show you each section uh, one by one. The idea is to kind of get you thinking outside of the box because it may not be this exact item or exact category that you find while you're out thrifting or at a garage sale or a state sale or wherever it is. But if you start thinking about these items, you may see similar items or you may see items that are in the uh, same genre or go along the lines of it. And this will help you to grow your knowledge and to hopefully expand your inventory and your profits. So number one, remote controls. You guys know that this is my niche. I sell in this. I sell tens of thousands of dollars in remote controls every month uh, between eBay, between Amazon, between wholesale and Shopify. Uh, this is really my bread and butter. And I can show you guys as we scroll down, you know, here's an order uh, for $64. And then I sell the bad one, $7.50, $7, but then I sell a $39 one. We try to stay away from the low dollar, less than $10, but we put them in there and it is what it is. Uh, $14.14 .14 for the little mini bows, $12.75, $8.99, $7, $16, and then $26, and $16, and $12, and then $48. This is how I average that $21, $22 because I get a lot of 30s and 40s, and then I get a lot of 10s and 12s and 7s. So it all evens out to about $22 per remote. Uh, my average cost of goods, $0.50, cents, sometimes a dollar when I'm paying up for some stuff, but generally... Um, it's somewhere less than a dollar, you know, above 50 cents. It just just depends on where I'm buying from, who I'm buying from, because I have quite a few sources. Uh, but when you're selling for $22 and you're paying about $350 for a label and $350 worth of fees are promoted, you're out seven bucks, you know, with your 50 cents to a dollar cost, you're easily making, you know, 14, 13, 14, 15 dollars profit per uh, remote control. So it's something, you know, you can definitely consider. I also sell wholesale boxes for $199 free shipping. You're paying $1.99 a remote. You sell some of the 20s and 30s and you're all set. Um, with that said, if you like a box, you just email me at rockstarflipper at gmail.com and I'll get you some boxes built and shipped out right away. Okay, number two on the list is DVD VCR combos. People see these at thrift stores and estate sales all the time. Now, not all of these are worth it because they are heavy and they do cost a lot of money to ship. And yes, you can charge the buyer shipping, but it's the same. Let's take example, this Sonic uh, Blue DVR 4400 that this person sold. It was a $30 DVD, but they charged 42 shipping because it probably did cost 30 or 40 bucks a ship. These things cost or weigh 15 and 20 pounds. So the problem is 
this is a $72 thing. They could have just charged $69.99 free shipping or $29.99 plus 42. It really doesn't make any difference either way, you know, here nor there. Um, but yeah, so you just have to be really careful um, when you're selling these items to make sure that you price them correctly, you got the weights, but you know, some of them may not be worth it. They may only be worth, instead of 70 combined, they only may be worth 35 or 40 combined, and then all of a sudden you have no money to make because this money's gone on the label. Then you got the fees that are charged on the total amount, so you have to be really careful with that. You know, here, look, perfect example, $40 free shipping. Well, let's say they picked this up cheap and it was uh, five bucks, right? So they made $35, but now they gotta pay $25 just to ship this. Let's say they ship it decently for 20 bucks. Now they're left with 20. On a $4, $40 sale, they're probably paying about six or seven in fees. So that puts them at 27 and they paid five, that's 32. They're only making eight bucks on this item. So you have to be very careful. But you pick up one of these that's worth $199 plus 25 shipping. Now you're doing something, $227. There's some, you know, this one is a $92 item this could be really good you pay you know your twenty dollars shipping you pay your ten dollars in fees you paid ten bucks for it so you're out 40 but you sold it for 92 so you made 52 dollars on this one again 70 and 20 so this was a 90 dollars sale look at the presentation look at everything that um they put together to do this so that's number two dvd vcr combos <coughs> <clears throat> Okay, number three, video games. Now, I used to specialize in these across eBay and Amazon. It's gotten harder on Amazon to sell these. By the way, these first two categories, absolutely items you can sell on Amazon. Video games can be sold on Amazon, but a lot of them are restricted for certain reasons. Uh, some by the company, some because of the amount of fakes that were coming through, so they just blocked them. Pokemon was one of them. Uh, some Pokemon open, some are not. But anyways, a lot of people still want to go back and, and buy those vintage and nostalgic games. So you can still find a lot of games that sell for really good money, especially, you know, Nintendo 64 and old school Japanese games and Final Fantasy games tend to do well. And some of the old Grand Theft Autos can do OK. Uh, some of the Mortal Kombat's do OK. So there's tons of games that do OK. The Mega Man games are generally uh, one to look for. So absolutely something you can sell on eBay and Amazon. Number four is GoPro cameras. Also, I would put into this category digital cameras, DSLRs, SLRs, any kind of camera gear, camera lenses, camera equipment, all sellable on Amazon. GoPro, a little bit restricted, but if you have a history, then you can probably do okay on this. A lot of, look, this is a GoPro Hero 5. I think they're on a GoPro Hero 9 or 10 by now. I own a 7, and it's been, I don't know, at least two years since I bought that, maybe three. So, um, the GoPro, you know, here is, is you're talking about a five-year-old GoPro still selling for $129. Here's a Hero 3 that I had six, seven, eight years ago that still sold for 70. So something you could pick up at a pawn shop or at an estate sale for 20 bucks. Okay, number, um, what is this, number five? Number five, vintage board games. Now, Hero's Quest, the Volcano game, all those really good. There are other games that are awesome to um, to look at. This vintage 1971 Pro Football Sports Illustrated game sold for $55 all in. Fat Chance game. A vintage feudal war game, which with everything going on right now, I can't believe this is selling. Black Sea Death. Uh, Black Sea Black Death by People's War Game, vintage board game Unpunched, 60 plus 21, 81. They took a best offer. That looks like some Russian war game. Wow, I can't believe that's being allowed. Uh, a G.I. Joe game sold for 30. So there's definitely some games. Uh, uh, an American Heritage game of Civil War sold for $28. There's tons and tons of games. War games uh, clearly doing well right now. Um, that's just the way the market goes, I guess. So... Uh, yeah, vintage board games, also puzzles, things like that can do well. Let's move on to number six, small appliances and appliance parts. Not my niche. Uh, and again, board games, this is something that you can sell on Amazon. Um, so, so far out of the first five, you can sell at least four of them, if not all five on Amazon. These small appliance parts and appliances, somebody help me. I don't know if you can sell these on Amazon. I This is not my niche, but they do really well. The KitchenAid mixers, the parts, 
any kind of the blades, uh, the bottoms, the tops. There's so many things that you can do with these parts and these full-on systems. Uh, it's just incredible how many of them pop up at garage sales and estate sales for 20 bucks, and you pick it up and sell it for 120 So keep your eyes out for small you know, kitchen countertop size appliances and mixers and bullets and ninjas and all that sort of thing. <clears throat> okay, moving on to action figures, small toys, uh, vintage or newer age. The newer age one's really good. Um, G.I. Joe's, uh, the, the Smurfs, uh, wrestling, w, WCW, WWF, WWE, uh, G.I. Joe, of course, uh, Transformers, you name it, Star Wars, Star Trek. Uh, there's all kinds of these toys and the accessories that just do ridiculously well. So definitely want to keep out uh, an eye for those. Number eight, um, Pokemon cards, trading cards, Magic the Gathering, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! The, the, the market for these blew up. They exploded. Um, you can still, you know, pick up collections from kids that are selling off their collections or parents or that have had them for 20 years, you know. And all of a sudden you start selling cards individually for 20 and for 15 and, and you bought a whole collection for 100 bucks and now you got $1,000 worth of cards. There are different generations and different things to look for. If you're not familiar, please educate yourself. Way back in the day, uh, I did buy and sell Magic cards. I was an expert on them. I actually competed in tournaments across the country, uh, pro tours, but I uh, didn't pursue it obviously when I became an adult. Uh, and I wasn't ever into Pokemon, although I did uh, own some at some point. I, I wasn't like a Pokemon, you know, fanatic or whatever. But yeah, it's um, it's it's a market that's hot. It's on fire. <laughs> so moving on, sporting uh, equipment, even used equipment, sporting goods, uh, baseball, softball is is big. Obviously, it's the boys of summer. The summer's coming up. Golf stuff, it's expensive. Cleats, just huge market. A lot of you sell. Uh, Baseball shoes, golf cleats, baseball cleats. Uh, I just joined our neighborhood's uh, co-ed softball team, so I had to go out and buy new cleats. Uh, thankfully, I had my glove. I bought a new bat, and I could tell you it's brand new at the store. That crap's expensive. Um, so you can come on eBay. People will go on eBay and buy up that stuff um, pretty quickly. Uh, some of these gloves can be worth, you know, on the used market, 100 bucks, 50 bucks, 30 bucks. Uh, some of the bats can be 50 to $100 used. I saw a $700 co-ed softball bat at Dick's. It was insanity. So uh, that's number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Number nine, uh, sporting goods. Sport, you know, used golf clubs. A lot of you are into used golf clubs. Peel an eye out for those. Um, so you can't really sell those on Amazon that I know of. And I don't think you can sell Pokemon or these action figures um but i would say out of the first nine at least six of these are amazonable so vintage toys from the 80s and 90s one of my favorite toys was these little pocket monster guys because i you know when i was a little tiny kid i could carry them around and i wouldn't lose them uh monsters in my pocket uh you know some of these guys were worth 15 20 bucks a pop still uh i've seen people selling full collections yeah here for 70 and 80 dollars of like 20 or 30 of them 40 of them um so definitely those vintage toys um, look for the Polly Pockets. That's, you know, another one. Any of those little mini toys, they were really, really popular. They do really well. Okay. Watches. Now, jewelry and watches is something that is not as popular. I don't see it in my groups. How many of you guys comment in the comment section if you flip costume jewelry um, or fashion jewelry, estate sale jewelry, or maybe even watches? I put watches in its own category. I felt like it deserved it. I have bought and sold a few watches and flipped them and made some money. Uh, I know a lot about Movado. I own several Movados, four or five of them, and I've spent anywhere from three or four hundred bucks up to like a thousand on Movados. And I know that some of my more expensive ones that I spent like eight hundred on are still worth like three hundred, three fifty, four hundred. You know, so you could pick them up. I used to buy Movados at pawn shops. Literally, uh, somebody had paid you know six hundred bucks for this Movado. It ends up on pawn that they pay them you know fifty dollars for it or seventy five dollars, and then I come in and they just want to double their money, and I give them one hundred fifty, and I take it home and I flipped it for 250 or 300 bucks and, and made some pretty good money doing you know some watch flips i did some gucci watches uh you have to know what you're doing you have to be able to tell that they're real uh, pretty good at movado pretty good at gucci watches um michelle watches uh, i'm fairly good at citizen and some other ones but if you know what you're doing you could definitely make uh you know 50 to 100 bucks profit per watch and you don't have to sell expensive Rolexes or Hublots or or anything like that to, to Breitlings to do it. So you can though, if you want to buy a you know five thousand dollar Rolex for forty five hundred and flip it for fifty five, you definitely can do it. Okay, costume jewelry we just mentioned it, brooches, estate sale, costume and fashion jewelry lots. There's uh you know 
tons. Tanya did all this. Uh, Margaret did it. Tons of people that could really make uh, some good money buying out lots and those jewelry buckets and jewelry jars. And then all of a sudden they pay 50 bucks and they pull out a piece that's worth 50 bucks and then they sell off all the rest. Um, not my niche. Again, this is not Amazonable. Neither would be the watches. But like I said, at least 10 or 12 of these categories are stuff you could take over to Amazon. Don't forget those links down in the description box, guys. MacBooks, uh, laptops in general, but specifically MacBooks. Now, I looked up a MacBook Pro 2017 15-inch. Uh, this is actually the computer I'm recording this on right now. Mine is five years old, coming up on five years old. Uh, and I paid right around, I bought this uh, couple, whatever, eBay opens, right before eBay open, you know, 2017, I think, or 2018, whatever, it, my other computer broke and I had to replace it. So I bought this. And this thing's been a great computer. I think I paid eighteen or nineteen hundred dollars because it was it had been out for about six months or eight months. Um, what it's realistically worth, I don't know why this one was at two thousand. Something crazy about that one, but here's what it's really worth: six twenty five, six forty three, six sixty nine, and that's correct. I have an i seven two point eight uh, sixteen gig five hundred twelve. See, this one's got a better five twelve SSD. I have the same Radeon. Um, I only have a two fifty six in this one. It really drives me insane. Uh, I use some external hard drives all the time, but um. Yeah, I mean, if you look down some of these 256 gigs and and look at the prices, like if I click on the 256 gig SSD right now, 625, 810, 600, 555. So realistically, I would probably put mine up for about six to 650, and I would expect to pocket around 525. Um, but that's pretty good considering I've had it for five years and I paid about 18 or 1900 bucks for it. You're talking about still being worth 30 percent of the price. Not too shabby, right? For a MacBook holding its value over five years and think about all the use that I got out of it. Um, it comes with some software, so maybe I could add ask a little more for it. But um, used MacBooks, you know, if somebody came along that wasn't me and wasn't savvy and had this MacBook for five, six years and all of a sudden you, they just want to sell it and you're like, hey, look, I'll give you three or 400 bucks for it. You could flip it and make yourself $100, $150. I've seen them at, at, at pawn shops all the time where somebody came in upon it and the pawn shop's like, we can give you 250 bucks and then they put it out for four or 500 and somebody gets a really good deal on it. I was able to pick one up for 300 once that was worth 600. So laptops specifically do hold value. Voice recorders and small electronics is next. Uh, I typically sell a lot of voice recorders. Here's a good one that's 50 bucks. Here's one that was listed for 38. Uh, they took a best offer on. Now there are a lot of 18 and 20 dollar ones. There's a lot of 30 dollar ones. You know, 20, 30, 30, 35, uh, 31, uh, 31, 30, 50, 40. A lot of these things sell used for between 30 and 40 dollars. I get them from the same place that I buy remotes from. They just happen to usually have a box or two. They never get pallets of these, but they'll get a box or two and I'll take it alongside of it. And they'll just charge me like, say, I don't know, 40 or 50 bucks for the box to throw it in. And there'll be like a hundred of these things or 50 of these things in there. And I'm into them for like a buck a piece. Now they do have a bad failure rate where a lot of them don't work. But if I can just pull 10 of them out of there and I get three or $400 out of a box that I paid 40 bucks for, it's always profitable. But you can find these. I've seen these, look, this one's 85. Olympus does well. I've seen these that people have them at flea markets and garage sales where they put like a dollar or $2 on them. And I take them home and sell them for 30 bucks or 40 bucks, you know, whatever it is. Uh, so it's definitely something to look out for. Also CDs, uh, players, oh, the old MP3 CD player, uh, type thing. Um, the Walkmans, the Walkman Sports, you know, the voice back talk boys like Kevin had in Home Alone, all uh, excellent things to be on the lookout for. Okay, uh, so moving along, number 15 is going to be tools, specialty tools, snap on, Mac tools, BMW specific, Mercedes specific, brand specific tools. Look at this one little half inch drive impact swivel joint extension socket. 25. Delora's $25. Uh, snap on tool wrenches, 32 plus three. They were asking almost $36. Tons of little tools. Look at this little air hammer uh, chisel, 26 bucks. Thing is beat to hell. Um, just tons. Look at this little 5 16 inch semi deep, 3 8 inch drive, 12 point socket made in the USA. Snap on $25. So keep an eye out for those tools. Number 16, Legos. Of course, the Lego minifigs, Lego specific. You just can't go wrong with Lego. Make sure it is legitimately. Um, Lego, because otherwise they will vary you and Vero you and take you down in a hurry. Look at this little uh, minifig set of two for $20. It's a dollar bill agent and dynamite. Pretty cool. 
Next, comic books. Our resident comic book expert, Dominic, uh, from Prime Time Treasure Hunter. He knows more about these. Uh, not my niche at all. Um, by the way, a couple of these, these tools could probably go on Amazon. These can go on Amazon. These can go on Amazon. So, again, uh, Legos, no go on Amazon generally. But, um, yeah, so Gunsmoke, look at this, 85 plus $8, $93. Uh, an Archie comic sold for $93. This is crazy. I just don't know anything about them. But uh, long story short, uh, if you watch Dominic's channel, Primetime Treasure Hunter, he'll teach you all about the comic books. He's got 10 or 15 videos that just cover comic books. But it's a great niche to sell. Textbooks. Now, books on Amazon, of course, huge market. Most sellers start on textbooks. Beginners did. Um, here's nursing book set for $57. Here is a $30 MET Federal Register Subchapter Inspection of Towing Vessels Final Rule Book. Interesting. Here's a 2018 Algebra 1 McGraw Hill Glencoe uh, Student Edition book sold for $90. So, books, not my thing. I have sold books. I don't like books, but you can make money off of books. No doubt about it. Number 19 is used. Now, I didn't want to get into the fashion and clothing because this is the non fashion and clothing, but look, shoes, boots, and specialty items like Birkenstocks, like um like crocs the specialty crocs like the dance goes like uh fry boots motorcycle boots anything that's special these birkenstocks especially 30 40 dollars upwards of 50 and 60 on some of these uh on average no matter what they look like look 61 almost 62 dollars for that pair of birkenstocks that's crazy right number 19 number 20 cell phones Proceed with caution. I don't recommend selling phones unless you know absolutely what you are doing. You know how to check serial numbers and ES, ESNs. You know how to call in lost and stolen, how to call in unpaid bills and finance, unless you know how to transfer them, unless you know how to protect yourself 110%. Now, I just got an iPhone 13 Pro Max. Finally, I upgraded. It came out in like September, October. Uh, I waited couple months to get it but um i had an 11 pro max before that a 256 gig and so i looked up what my phone would have been worth i traded it to verizon they gave me like 500 dollars off the cost of my new phone which was fantastic like 500 dollars, i don't have to do nothing but pack it up and ship it in well here's what it was worth on the internet somewhere between five and six hundred dollars 513 530 uh this one was basically new 585 somewhere in the 550 to 600 range was probably fair but don't forget even if i got 600 the fee on that's going to be about 70 or 80 dollars and i'm gonna have to pay to ship it and, and put insurance and signature on it i'm gonna lose probably close to 80 if not a hundred dollars on a transaction around 600 dollars all in so i'm gonna be left with about five to 525 and so i figured give it up to verizon for 500 dollars and uh, I don't have to worry about scammers. I don't have to worry about protecting myself, shipping. Does it get there in one piece, damage, uh, payment, non-payers, all that kind of crap. And so that's what I did. I sold it uh, directly through Verizon. But if you know how to do phone flipping, there are entire Facebook groups. This used to be my entire business. There are entire Facebook groups, training groups, training programs, people that teach you how to buy and sell phones and make money. And literally, I saw guys that couldn't figure out how to make $1,000 a month reselling go over to phones and start making a thousand dollars a day no joke yeah they had to put out three four five hundred bucks they'd buy a phone for 150 sell it for 250 and make a hundred dollars and then they would learn how to do that two or three times a day and all of a sudden they're making three four five hundred bucks a day and then obviously they've gone up from there to um to a thousand bucks a day so i've seen it uh phones can be very very profitable they sell super fast you don't have to worry about promoted listings you don't have to worry about free shipping you don't have to worry about any of the stuff that you worry about with everything else you put a phone up it will sell but um yeah you have to be very careful and protect yourself anyways uh, appreciate you guys watching that is uh my video that is the uh, top items to sell that are not clothing and make sure that you remember there are links down below to learn all about amazon the links are to a free download book you can have and a free webinar that's coming up on March 1st. Do not forget to register for those. They're absolutely free and uh, you can check those out and schedule in there and um, learn more about uh, Amazon and wholesale and selling items outside of your normal comfort level and selling items outside of the clothing niche. As always, please hit that like button. It really helps the algorithm. It helps me and it helps me show, uh, you know, show me that you guys enjoy the videos and it helps support what I do. Um, show your support to this channel. Please click that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And have a wonderful, amazing weekend last weekend in February. And I'll see you guys again tomorrow.